Are you a Leica photographer that loves the 28mm focal length but want a camera setup smaller than the Leica Q3? Thanks to Voigtlander, I think I have the answer. In today's video, I'm going to bring you three brand new lenses from Voigtlander, and they fit both Leica screw mount cameras and Leica M mount cameras. Stay tuned, and I'll compare these new lenses to existing 28mm lenses for Leica. I'll do my usual side by side testing. And then I'll do some real world testing both in Italy and the UK. Flakehead Photographic kindly sent me four copies of this lens on pre release, and by the end of this video, you should know which copy may be best for you. Hello, welcome, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So let's jump straight into the details. As I mentioned in the intro, there are three versions of this lens and six variants in total. Let's break those down. So, first, we have the Type 1 VM mount, which is Leica M mount. And then there's also a Type 1 L mount, L39 mount, which is like a screw mount. Both of these look pretty much the same, except one is M mount and one is screw mount, as the name suggests. Next, we have Type 2, and that is also like M mount, but that is a slightly different design. Let's now go through each lens, and I'll explain the differences between the two lenses, so you know which one may be best for you. Okay, the Type 1 lenses. These are the tapered retro design, similar to the Voigtlander Heyer 40mm f2.8 lens, the lens that I love and use a lot. Very, very similar in design. You've got the retro style infinity lock slash tab. The Type 1 lenses have a minimum close focus distance of 0.7 meters, and they are range finder coupled to 0.7 meters. The Type 1 lens has a 34mm filter size, and it comes with a screen hood and metal cap. Type 1 lenses are a brass design. The L mount version weighs 122 grams or 4.3 ounces, and the Leica M mount lens weighs 143 grams or 5 ounces. Still pretty lightweight. Now, what about Type 2? Type 2 is a modern design and has a modern style focus tab. The advantage of the Type 2 is it now has a minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters and range finder coupled from 0.7 meters. Like the Type 1, the Type 2 comes with a screen hood. It's just a slightly different design. And the Type 2 has a 39mm filter thread. The Type 2 lens is an aluminium design, so it weighs less than the Type 1, weighing in a tiny 106 grams or 3.7 ounces. Probably to just point out the obvious, these are full frame lenses, not APS-C, despite them being extremely small. All three lenses covered come in both black and silver design, so that gives you six different lenses in total. Being Voigtlander lenses, both the Type 1 and the Type 2 are proper metal and glass lenses, manual focus only, and as mentioned, rangefinder coupled if you're using a rangefinder camera. Both lenses give you half stop aperture clicks, and both lenses have a maximum aperture of 2.8, stopping down to f22. The optical design is eight elements in five groups, with ten aperture blades, and it's said to be the same performance as the earlier Voigtlander Ultron 28f2. I wanted to see if that was true. So I did some testing. So the photos you're about to see are raw unedited photos shot with the Leica M240 and with the Type 1 lens. To my eyes, the colours look good, even as unedited raw files. I tried to photograph different things, different colours, to try to give you a rough idea of what this lens is, is capable of. These photos now are shot with the Leica SL in Italy, but again using the same lens. Try to do some wider shots and also some close ups. Okay, what do the photos look like when you actually edit them? So these photos are now the raw files with a Mr. Leica color preset added. It basically converts your boring flat raw file into a more saturated, contrasty, poppy JPEG style photo. I use my Mr. Leica presets to edit all my images. If you're interested, you can find a download link below. With the preset added, I think the photos look really vibrant and full of life, and I'm very happy with the colours. Again, I've tried to photograph different textures, different subjects, to give you a rough idea of what this lens can achieve. Where we were staying in Italy, it was very pretty, so lots of old buildings and little narrow streets. I even found this little red VW Beetle, and I like the, uh, the small registration plate in particular. I was actually in Italy for a body painting contest, so if you want to see the body painting photos, see my previous video on the Leica Q cameras. I was also using the lens on a vintage Leica 1 Barnett camera, but I've not yet developed photos. Okay, let's now look at the characteristics of the lens. First, sun stars. 
At 2.8, there's a bit of a smudge, but from F4 onwards, you start to get sun stars, which is similar to many other 49mm lenses. Next, the lens flare. I always try to have my lenses as small as possible, so regardless of what camera I was using, I was using the lenses without a lens hood. As you can see, there's almost no flare in the photos, and it's really well controlled. Okay, bokeh. Uh, it depends on which lens you're using. If you're focusing with a Type 1 lens, you can get this bokeh. And if you're focusing with a Type 2 lens, you can get an improved bokeh because you can now shoot at 0.5 meters. That gives you nice separation, as you can see in this crop. Okay, your vignetting. At f2.8, this lens has quite heavy vignetting and fall off in the corners. And then like with most lenses, as you stop the lens down, the vignetting reduces. Next, I wanted to test the lens sharpness, both at different f-stops and then also compared to other lenses. I've had the lenses for a few weeks, so I've done various sharpness tests over that time in different conditions. I also wanted to test the scope part against my other favourite 28mm Leica lenses. And here are some of the results. First, the TT Artisan 28mm f5.6 Summeron clone. The scope part performs better than the TT Artisan as to be expected. Next, the Leica Elmerit 28f2.8 Historical. If you're shooting colour with a Leica M240, the scope bar is actually better because it doesn't have the purple cast at the edge of the frame. What about the Voigtlander Ultron 28f2? I'd say similar results from both lenses. I wanted to do more testing with both the Type 2 and the Type 1 lens, so I took both lenses with me to Italy. These test results now are being shot with the Leica SL camera rather than the M240. For this scene, I took a corner crop and then zoomed in at Lightroom. The corners are quite soft at 2.8, but as we stop down f4, f5.6, f8, the corners sharpen up nicely. Next, I tested all four versions of the lens to the mentioned alternative brands. I wanted to test the lenses closer to infinity, so I took a center crop from this scene. The center sharpness is good enough at 2.8, but it improves a lot as you stop down to 5.6. How's it compared to the other lenses? First, against the TT Artisan, I would say it easily beats the TT Artisan. Next, against the Elmerit, this time the Elmerit really shines both at 2.8 and at 5.6, being the sharper lenses in both images. What about the Voigtlander Ultron? Again, the Voigtlander Ultron is perhaps very slightly sharper at f2.8. Okay, what about centre sharpness up close? Again, I took a centre crop, but I'd say all lenses look slightly soft whether it's the scope bar, the Ultron, or the Elmerit. As predominantly a black and white shooter, I took the lens out for more testing, this time shooting in black and white, like M240 RAW files plus the Mr. Leica black and white preset. I think you can get some nice results in black and white, and this guy came and said hello to me, so I, I offered to take his picture. I think for real world use, the vignetting actually adds something to black and white photos and helps you focus on the centre of the frame, Here's a photo at 2.8, and then the same photo at 5.6 to show how much the lens sharpens up. I just want to stop the video and say a huge thanks to my amazing patrons. For more information, click the link below. Okay, what about price? These lenses are not yet available through B&H, but you can pre-order them. If you're in the UK, Robert White lists these lenses. Visit the MrLock.com blog, you can get 5% off if you're a UK customer. Okay, so what is the verdict? As you saw from my test results, the new color scope art outperforms my TT Artisan 28 5.6, being a more modern asterical lens design, but it wasn't quite as sharp as the Leica Elmerate 28 f 2.8. For what's something small, compact, and affordable, I'd go for the new color scope art lens. The big question is, is which lens do you buy? All three lenses sound amazing on paper, but some lenses will suit some users more than others. Personally, I think the Type 2 lens is best for mirrorless users. That would be like SL users, CL users, and anybody using a non a camera. An advantage users of the Type 2, it's the lightest lens. It's probably equally small, almost as small. You've got a minimum place focus distance of 0.5 meters instead of 0.7 meters, which does actually make a difference in real world use. It's got the easiest to read focus scale, as you can see it from the top of the lens rather than on the side. And it's got the modern focus type design which I think would be preferred by most street shooters. Watch out, like at end camera users. I think if you use it, the EDF or Visoflex most of the time, I'd still recommend the Type 2 over the Type 1 for all the benefits mentioned.
If you're like an M user, whether it's digital or film, and you only focus by the rangefinder, I'd recommend the Type 1. The Type 1 design has a minimum focus distance of 0.7 meters, so it's better suited to rangefinder users. And what about all of you film shooters? If you love shooting film and you shoot screw mount cameras, maybe as well as M mount cameras, I'd highly recommend the L39 lens. This lens will fit your Barnett cameras, it'll fit a Savoy and a Besser R, Canon rangefinder cameras, and any other screw mount camera. If then I choose the L mount lens on your M camera, you just need to get yourself a LTM to M adapter and you're good to go. So the question is, which lens am I going to get? The first lens I'm going to get is definitely going to be the L mount Type 1 to fit on my 1931 like a standard. That would just make an amazing walkabout setup or everyday carry. If I happen to then win the lottery, I'll definitely also pick up the Type 2 lens and use that on my SL camera and even use it for portraits. If you're interested in 28mm lenses but you're not sure which one to get, watch these other 28mm lens reviews next.